This video is a video of the fourth exercise of the basics of using LIDAR. In this exercise we discuss converting LIDAR data to county coordinates systems. Now, this basics of using LIDAR data workshop is, is a subset of the conservation applications of LIDAR series. Now to talk about coordinate systems and projected and uh, underlying datum that we need to talk about the data that you received or you downloaded from uh, the uh, MinGeo website, uh, MinGeo FTP site. And that this data was processed by the DNR at a statewide basis and the uh, projection and coordinate system that is used is, co is consistent with many of the, uh, the MinGeo and the DNR data layers at a statewide basis and that is it's using UTM and using the NAD83 datum and it's using a particular uh, ellipsoid that is uh, <clears throat> that is used for the UTM system and that is the GRS80 uh, re reference ellipsoid that's used for the UTM system worldwide and this is the particular datum that is built upon that ellipsoid or the synonym for ellipsoid is spheroid built upon that model of the Earth. So they've got a mathematical model of the Earth that they build their coordinate system upon and this and this is established into a datum or uh, uh, realized into a datum and this datum is called GCS North American uh, underscore NAD83 and that's what's used for Minnesota a UTM 15 NAD83 now, if we look at a particular county coordinate system, and I, I brought up one here to show you to compare, that Yellow Medicine county coordinate system uses a different reference ellipsoid and, uh, and the different datum uh, that's built upon that. And that this process is done to establish improved local uh, coordinates so that there is an improved local coordinate system, projected coordinate system, and datum for each county so that they could uh, improve the accuracy of the measurements within that particular county and not be spreading it over the state or the country or the world. So that they've established in each county an improvement of the, the NAD83 datum using the high accuracy reference network, the, the improvement that was done, um, to the original NAD83 and that they're also using a slightly different uh, ellipsoid or spheroid. Remember I said ellipsoid and spheroid are synonym. And if you look at the semi-major axis and you look at the number here, one the last three digits is 137, here it's 530. Okay, so there's a slight difference along the equator and along the pole it's uh, 6752 compared to 7144. So the, the north-south and the east-west uh, model of the underlying Earth, <clears throat> the ellipsoid, is different between these. So we have to establish a geographic transformation, a datum transformation, between uh, the uh, delivered data from the UTM-15 for the state into the particular county coordinate system. Now, you might have done this if you work with other data from the... Uh, um, the DNR, MinGeo, statewide data, you might have done this already. But if you uh, haven't, how you do that is you're using the data management tools of the toolbox and we're using projections and transformation. And there's several pieces here that you want to pay attention to. The one that we want to do is create this custom geographic. That's the datum transformation. All right, so we're going to create a custom one so we have it. We only need to do this once. And I'm going to give it a name. I give it a name and I'm going to select the the uh, input coordinate system. Now that input coordinate system would be coming from the um, the UTM-15. Okay, the UTM-15 and now my output coordinate system I have to select the proper geographic coordinate system for that particular county coordinate system that I'm, I'm looking at. And you'll pick your county now for the example here I'm using yellow medicine. Okay? You'll notice we've got that new ellipsoid that they use for their county. And then custom 
uh, transformation. Now this is the important part. You have to select the method for this purpose as a longitudinal rotation. There's several different methods for uh, mathematically moving from one ellipsoid to another ellipsoid. And the, the particular one that's used in this case is longitudinal. And we would say, OK, now that custom is stored for us and we can use it whenever we're projecting. So I'm going to project now and I'm going to project in the vector world first and I'm going to pick say the 50 meter contours, a vector layer and I'd give it a name at its location and when I'm picking my output coordinate system now I'm dealing with projected. Now I'm dealing with the information at the the projected level and I want to select whether I want it in meters or feet and here I'm going to go to yellow medicine again so I'm going to yellow medicine and feet. Now the geographic transformation. Now we bring in that which we had saved previously and we could make sure we're selecting yellow medicine. I've got it selected twice here so I don't need it twice. Uh, so then I would hit OK and I would then properly reproject that into the county coordinate system. Now in the uh, raster world we use a little different tool. <clears throat> you want to make sure when you're projecting Projecting raster and vector are different. They're different data structures. So you want to use a different process in the projection. And you want to make sure you don't use define. You would be using the raster, project raster. And when you're projecting raster, you use many of the same steps. You would have your input. You select your uh, the input coordinate system and the name. And your output coordinate system, you would pick your yellow medicine again here and projected county coordinate systems so you'd select your output coordinate system just as before now in the geographic you're picking yellow medicine again so that's great so that's similar to the vector but what's important is that you use uh, some different uh, resampling techniques and when you're resampling you want to make sure that when you're resampling the uh, raster data that is elevation Okay, where it varies from cell to cell, uh, the elevation, you would want to make sure you're using bilinear. So you're creating a bilinear transformation. If you were using categorical data like land cover or zoning, where, where they're, uh, all the one cell is next to another cell is, is in one category, like it's property A or property B, then you would be using the, uh, the near, uh, the the nearest, which stands for nearest neighbor, all right, uh, which is the default value. So you want to make sure that you, you, if you're converting elevation data, you switch this to bilinear. Now we can, uh, when you're projecting, also change the cell size. Uh, that it is um, often best to think about that process because you're changing the 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 or the structure of the raster. And often you do the cell size change in a resampling, but you can change the cell size. But the important one is that you pay attention to the resampling technique uh, and use the bilinear for the elevation and the nearest for a categorical, nearest neighbor for the categorical data like land cover or zoning of that sort. This then completes this exercise.